So yesterday I was screwing around on Twitter. I am Uniservo on Twitter if you want to follow me. And TubeTime had posted some nice photographs of his, I assume it's his, old digital multimeter from Fairchild. It had Nixie tubes. And a very nice photo shoot. And, uh, well, I had to respond. So I had to pull out this, the train wreck of technology, the Ballantine 355 digital voltmeter. And, uh, kind of a, kind of an odd beast, <laughs> because as you can probably immediately tell, it's mechanical. It is a mechanical digital voltmeter. Now, this dates to, I think, the very early 60s. And, well, the reason I call it a train wreck of technology is because it pretty much covers it all. It's got transistors. It has tubes. It has mechanical counters. It's got pen turn pots. It's got, I think, there, there's all sorts of weird stuff in it. <laughs> um, talk about a transition piece. Well, uh, so I decided to, to get it out and threw some pictures up and uh, created, a, I guess, a little bit of a stir. So I figured, you know what? I'm going to make a video. I'm going to make a video. So decided to fool around with it and uh, plugged it in and uh, got it not really working all that great, but it sort of works. It does need some uh, some help in the input stage. I don't think the... Uh, the uh, Whatever, whatever is right, right, right behind the uh, the input here is 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 unhappy. So we're gonna basically have to deal with uh, um, not actually measuring something real. We're just gonna measure line noise. So let me uh, let me uh, prop that up with um, a weird tube and turn this guy on. It growls. It growls. Okay, and you can see it's we're gonna measure AC millivolts. You can see there is a counter in there. I think there might be a backlight that is out on this. It uh, that's awfully dim, but you can you can see that a, a decimal point does show up. But uh, let's get this thing going here, and away it goes. And you can see it's got some issues. Uh, probably needs a lube job. But, uh, oh, and it's going to, well, oh, full scale. So let's see if we can uh, get this thing to go back. There, it's starting to go back. <laughs> yes, basically what's happening here is this thing has a motor in it, and that's what's growling. I think the motor is kind of dying on it. It's, it probably doesn't have the torque that it used to, uh, because I did do a little bit of a lube and uh, it's still having problems so uh, yes there is a motor which turns a 10 turn pot so you can balance out a bridge circuit and that 10 turn pot is connected to a mechanical counter so oh, just went down so it's trying to rehome right now and uh, balance everything out and yeah we're just yeah, I'm on the millivolt scale, so we're just picking up uh, basically noise. Because like I said, it's feeding it real voltage does not seem to want to work. So uh, that's how this thing works. A real train wreck. It is basically not really successive approximation, but sort of. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a motor. Oh, it's getting a little better. It's getting a little better. You guys can see the counter running. Yeah, you can see the counter running. Anyway, eventually it'll settle down. But yeah, you can. We're on AC here, but there's also DC, DC plus, DC minus, and a number of ranges. And you can see it. It screws around with the uh, the decimal point and well, illuminates an M there. Anyway, let's take a look at the inside of this because, like I said, it's a train wreck. Get you out of the way. I've loosened the covers up. Yes, Ballantine. Ballantine was an engineer. Uh, I forget his first name, but he was uh, fairly instrumental in the um, the whole Boonton, New Jersey area uh, engineering uh, boom, if you will. 
in the 20s and 30s. Yes, uh, Boonton, New Jersey, which is about 40 miles west of, of 30 to 40 miles west of New York City, almost due west, actually, became its own little thing, and a bunch of electronics companies uh, sprouted out there. Uh, Boonton Electronics, of course, and there were various, various spin-offs of Boonton, but Measurements was there, Ballantine was there, Aircraft Radio was there, a bunch of for the time, very high-tech companies. There's almost nothing left there. There is, a, I think, a spin-off of Booten Electronics still in operation, but all the big names are gone. Well, Ballantine was indeed one of them. And you can see this apparently belonged to Eclipse Pioneer at one point. So let's take a look at this guy here. Yes, you can see we've got tubes and transistors. And we got a, a TL3 down there. Um, I believe the input stage here um is tube because this the specs on this I did look them up they're they're not that horrible actually um so I believe that this actually does use a tube for the uh um for the input um you know just so you don't you 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 you're not going straight in so you have at least some decent input impedance but then you've got the control electronics on this side. And you see we've got a nice big, looks like a Chicago transformer in there. But uh, I, I might guess that that is where the, uh, the actual uh, amp... In fact, let me see what, what kind of tube is that. Oh, that's a chopper. Okay, that makes sense that that's a chopper. But yeah, so, so we have even more weird technologies in this thing. But here's the business end. Yep, that's a motor. That is a motor. And as you can see, down in there, there is a 10-turn pot. I think it's 10-turn. I'm not sure. And a gear. We can turn it. We can turn it manually there. And essentially what this thing does it is the motor will go and uh, turn the pot which indeed is connected to the, the counter there. You can see that. And uh, there is uh, basically the 10-turn pot is part of a bridge circuit. And when everything balances out, it stops. It's got this nifty control system basically in there. So, uh, yeah, and then when it's done... You read off, you know, whatever it is. Say, uh, you know, you read off 88.7 or 887 millivolts or whatever you're you're doing here. You know, we got a little zero adjust, which I couldn't get to work, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, this thing basically free run, free runs. Although you can stop it, but hold, and that's a momentary hold there. But yeah, you you, you when you want to uh, read something, a voltage, you go from hold to read and. Well, the train starts running. <laughs> so, uh, eh, not much to see in the back. Um, yeah, a little filthy. I didn't really have much time to, to actually clean this guy. But uh, weirdness, 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 weirdness. Um, I may eventually try and see what's going on with the uh, the input stage. Why, why it actually, you know, if I feed like two volts into this thing or one and a half volts, it doesn't actually really want to measure the one and a half volts. So what you saw me run, uh, reading there was basically just AC noise, millivolts of noise. But it would be, I suppose, nice to see this thing actually work uh, properly. Uh, oh, you can see the specs there. Can get, the, get on the specs there. There we go. So, I mean, not horrible specs for the day, but not great. But hey, it is what it is. It is an interesting try. So there we have it. A train wreck of technology. You name it, it's got it. Let's get on this side too. Oh, I just noticed there, it looks like there might be actually uh, <laughs> mechanical governors in there too. Oh boy. Well, yeah. A real train wreck of technology. We got circuit boards and we got direct wiring. We've got it all. So yeah, let's stick that back up there. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, leave a comment. I'd like to find a manual for this thing so I can really fix it. All right. Bye-bye.